Today we're going to look at one of the applications of exponents and that is the idea of exponential growth. And exponential growth occurs when you have growth on top of the growth from the previous year. So, for example, if you invest money and you earn interest over a year, at, for the next year, you will earn interest on your original amount with the interest that you've earned from the previous year. Another good example of exponential growth is populations. When a population grows, if it has a starting amount and it grows during a year, in the next year, the growth will be not only on what you started off with, but including what you what it grew to in the previous um, period. Okay, so the formula for the um, for exponential growth is if you want your final value, in other words, the amount that you have at the end of a period of growth, you find that by taking your starting value, whether it's money or the starting population of frogs in a pond or whatever the case might be, and you multiply that starting value by one plus the percentage growth per year or per period most of the time the period that we deal with will be in years and you raise that to the exponent of the number of periods that you're dealing with and the important thing here is that your percentage of growth and your number of periods must agree. So if your percentage growth is for a month, then your N value must also be in months. If your percentage growth is per annum or per year, PA means per annum, which is basically just the Latin for saying for a year, and the number of periods must then also be in years. Okay, so if we look at an example, I invest 10,000 Rand for three years. At the end, of the three years, it is now worth 11,910 Rand and 16 cents. What annual interest rate was earned? Okay, so this formula is basically an equation. It's got an equal sign in it, and there are four unknown values or four values that I can substitute into that equation. And so long as I know three out of the four values, I can always solve for the fourth value. So the final value is the value at the end of the investment. In this example, that is 11,910 Rand and 16 cents. The starting value is 10,000 Rand. The percentage growth per period or the interest, I don't know in this case. That's what they're wanting me to find out, what annual interest rate was earned. And the number of periods, I've had this investment for three years. So the job here is we want to get the I, the interest, on its own on one side of the equation. So we need to start peeling off the layers. The first thing that we're going to do is divide both sides by 10,000. Right, so when we divide by 10,000, that leaves us with 1 plus I to the power of 3. And 11,910 Rand and 16 divided by 10,000 is 1,19 one zero one six. Don't round off during a calculation because then you're not going to have an accurate answer at the end. We now want to get this one plus i on its own, so we need to find the cube root of both sides of the equation. That just leaves us with one plus i, and if you work out the cube root of the left hand side on your calculator, you get a value of 53 over 50. We now want to minus one from both sides in order to get the i by itself, which gives you 3 over 50. And if we now times by 100 to get it into a percentage, 3 over 50 is actually 0, 0,06 times by 100 is 6% per annum, which is your interest. Okay, there is an example for you to try on your own. Right, there are 230 frogs in a pond. If their population grows by an average of 3% every year, how many frogs will there be in three years' time? Okay, so... If we substitute into our formula, our final value, our end amount, we don't know. So the amount at the end of the life of the three years we are trying to find out. We know that we're starting with 230 frogs and they are growing by 3% every year. So 3% as a decimal is 0, 0,03 and the number of years that we are interested in is for three years. So 230 um, into uh, 1 plus Nought common nought three to the power of three is equal to two hundred and fifty one comma three. 
Now, you can't have comma three of a frog because you're dealing with living things. So the context of the question means that we need to round this figure off to the nearest whole number of 251.